she was acting very child-like in mind, hanging on to a cage meshing where she's swinging back and forth. She's grabbing onto a door where she's swinging back and forth in a child, like infantile almost in nature. There's times when she's pulling at the back of her hair in frustration. There's a blip in the tape where when she had two pieces of paper, when it comes back to her, you see this paper balled up as if she's trying desperately to hang on to perhaps her sanity at that point. You clearly see her trying to make a phone call. But I offer to you that I don't believe a successful phone call was made. So Mr. Steve Whitmore in his slippery words is correct. She did attempt to make phone calls, several phone calls. But I submit to you, those phone calls were not completed phone calls. They did not go through. What would leave me with that impression? The very fact that as she's trying to make a phone call from the house phone, she's trying to get someone's attention to help her. And she's being ignored, perhaps. Who knows? That's my speculation. But what I do know is a fact. No one came to assist her. When she finally quieted down and went to lay face down on a brick bench, a, a cemented bench, face down, someone tips over and peeks in at her. She hears it. She jumps up and goes directly to where she heard that sound, trying to get help. And whoever that deputy or employee was, they turned and they walked away. And she goes through the whole scenario again. And it's at, after that point where she really becomes what I would say unbalanced because it's shortly after that that she begins to swing from the chain meshings in this booking cell like an infantile child. Let me just make one other point. If you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to answer briefly. Uh, it's my intention to get this information immediately. I plan to start issuing subpoenas immediately. And I can assure you of this. Uh, if it wasn't for Ms. Sutton's efforts, this story would not be kept alive. We appreciate the media's help. But there are so many unanswered questions, primarily because none of the players involved have ever given any type of public statement. Well, we are going to get that now because now they're required to have their deposition taken. Everyone at that station and everyone involved in LAPD who was involved in the investigation will be deposed. And short of, I can assure you this, short of the other side demanding that these depots be kept sealed, I am going to release them. So you will have no, no withholding of evidence from our side. Leo, has the psychologist seen the, the videos? Not to uh, my knowledge. Booking, I'm, it's booking video, right? It's booking video that, that the LA County Sheriff had. The psychologist, according to the LAPD, reviewed her diaries and information that she had in her car that day and came up with the conclusion that she exhibited uh, bipolar dis uh, behavior. Leo, the, the footage is of her in a, a cell or where she's being booked? Holding cell. It's in a holding cell. And was she, was that the only cell uh, she was in that was a holding cell? Let me cell ask you, do you like recall that? Was it Was it? According to Lieutenant Rosin, we were told that that, that area where my trees was, was um, held is called a booking cage, and that is where they hold them. And that's where she was held the entire time? Um, with, with the exception of when they took her back to, with the exception of when they took her back to do her fingerprinting with, and, and the videotaping of her tattoos, which, by the way, um, that was vital information that could have helped us early on in the search had we been privy to this information because we would have had pictures of those identifying marks. Mr. Sutton, I have to ask you because the, according to Leo, the, the, the last part of the lawsuit mentions one of the complaints of being wrongful death. Do you believe that your daughter has died? Do you believe that she's now dead? Is that what you're supposing? 
I continuously search for my daughter, my trees, physically, not with rallies. I physically get out there and I search for her. As a matter of fact, with the help and the assistance coordination of LA React this past weekend, we had a very successful search looking for my daughter because my hopes is that she is alive. But I do have to face the possibility that based on how long she has been missing, she is either being held and transported from place to place, or she may be dead. I cannot ignore that fact, but I'm gonna search for her because my hopes is to find who has her so that I can return her home to her family. So I have to ask you because the, according to Leo, the, Terrell, the last part of the lawsuit mentions one of the complaints as being wrongful death. Do you believe that your daughter has died? Do you believe that she's now dead? Is that what you're supposing? I continuously search for my daughter, my trees, physically not with rallies. I physically get out there and I search for her. As a matter of fact, with the help and the assistance coordination of LA React this past weekend, we had a very successful search looking for my daughter because my hopes is that she is alive. But I do have to face the possibility that based on how long she has been missing, she is either being held and transported from place to place or she may be dead. I cannot ignore that fact, but I'm gonna search for her because my hopes is to find who has her so that I can return her home to her family. Does the video go through the whole booking process to the fingerprinting the whole thing? Yes, it does. And that's how we were able to learn of the tattoos and we were able to demand copies of those distinctive tattoos that could help positively identify her if someone happened to see her you know, on skid row or something. And you know, and the irony of that is, and I, I want I cannot stress this, why did the sheriff department tell his son, myself, the public that there was no videotape a, a week after it happened? And this mysterious tape shows up three months later in the desk drawer a Captain Martin. Does it show that the tape that you were talking about, does it show her leaving the station? Yes, it does. Yeah. And I will tell you, that is the most gripping part that, that disturbed me the most. Because I have previously stated, prior to seeing that video, that I have always believed that perhaps an officer offered her a ride because there's no way she could have made it to that Montanito location where she was spotted on someone's back porch. Now, what further seals that suspicion is after Maitrice is released into the dark night, a jailer is walking her to a double locked gate in which she has to be physically let out. And upon the jailer's return, as she walks into the door, before the door completely closes. That's when we see a full uniformed deputy pop out of another door that's right beside the door where the jailer enters, headed in the direction towards my daughter. So at the very least, we know that this officer, this deputy may have offered my daughter assistance. However, I cannot be provided with that officer's name to ask, well, did he see her? Did he offer her a ride home? We do have in this lawsuit, which we're gonna provide, the name of the officers who we have sued and who have been identified, at least through the police report. And so we're gonna provide you with copies of the lawsuit. Uh, during the meeting with Sheriff Baca, we were able to pose questions in such a way where I guess at that point, Captain Tom Martin felt that it was time to indicate what footage he did have. Let me translate. It was time for uh, Captain Martin to tell the truth. 